Evolution is the change over time in one or more inherited traits found in populations of organisms. Inherited traits are particularly distinguishing characteristics, including anatomical, biochemical, or behavioral characteristics that result in gene and bind interaction. So what does that mean? Evolution can basically be defined as extent with modification. Organisms constantly evolve in order to better their genetic makeup in order to become more reproductively successful. It all started with Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, a med school dropout, went on to pursue his life's dream of studying nature around the world. He boarded the HMS Beagle in 1831, and eventually, on his long and epic journey of surveying land, he arrived at the Galapagos Islands. There, Darwin observed many interesting things. One of the things Darwin observed was natural selection, which is the basis for evolution. Natural selection is a process by which individuals have certain heritable characteristics survive and reproduce at a higher rate than other individuals. Over time, natural selection can increase the match between organisms and their environment. This is what Darwin saw in the finches of the Galapagos Islands. These finches had different adaptations for different ecological roles. For example, the cactus eater finch had a long, sharp beak to help it eat the cactus flower, and the seed eater finch had a differently shaped beak adapted for cracking seeds. All of these different adaptions help the organisms enhance their survival and reproduction in a specific environment. On his Galapagos trip, Darwin made four important observations and two inferences about the organisms he was observing. He observed that members of a population often vary greatly in their traits, that traits are inherited from parents to offspring, that all species are capable of producing more offspring than their environment can support, and that many of these offspring do not survive because of the lack of food. From these important observations, Darwin inferred that individuals whose inherited traits give them a higher probability of surviving and reproducing in a given environment tend to leave more offspring than other individuals, and that this unequal ability of individuals to survive and reproduce will lead to the accumulation of favorable traits in the population over generations. This is the basis of natural selection and what is explained in Darwin's book, The Origin of Species. Now let's move along to homologies and tree thinking. A homologous structure is a structure that is similar to another structure in a similar species that has a different function. Basically variations on a structural theme mapped out by an ancestor. Let's take a look at an example. Your arm, a cat's leg, a whale's fin, and a bat's wing are all homologous structures. All of these have the same basic bone structure. One curious type of homology is the vestigial structure. A vestigial structure is a structure that once was important in an ancestor but now is not. For example, the appendix of the human is considered to be a vestigial structure. Now for the evolutionary tree. Evolutionary trees are invaluable tools. They are able to represent the pattern of descent from common ancestors and the resulting homologies. Let's take a look at the following evolutionary trees and indulge in some tree thinking. If you look at this tree, you will see that there are many different animals on it. Each branch point on the tree represents the common ancestor of all the species that descends from it. For example, all animals, plant prey, and on descended from the highlighted branch point. This also shows the different homologies that these creatures all have in common. For example, only turtles and leopards have the amniotic egg in common. Another important topic is convergent evolution and analogous features. Convergent evolution is when two organisms of different lineages evolved to form similar structures like the flying squirrel and the sugar glider. These shared features due to convergent evolution are said to be analogous. Back to the mechanisms of evolution. When Darwin published his Origins of Species, there was no knowledge of what was passed down between organisms and inherited. Luckily, a few years after Darwin, Mendel came along and provided the answer, genes. The knowledge of genes allows for a better study of the variations within a population. Overall, the gene variability in a population can be quantified as the average heterozygosity or the average percent of loci that are heterozygous. 
In addition to variation in populations, species also exhibit geographic variation, the differences in the genetic composition of separate populations. An important example of a geographic variation is a climb, or a graded change in a character along a geographic axis. A mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence of an organism's DNA. Most mutations occur in somatic cells and are lost when the individual dies. Point mutations can have a significant impact on phenotype, as in the case of sickle cell disease. However, most point mutations are harmless. Chromosomal mutations that delete or rearrange many gene loci at once are almost always harmful. In rare cases, chromosomal rearrangements may be beneficial. For example, the translocation of part of one chromosome to a different chromosome could link genes that act together in a positive way. Gene duplication is an important source of new genetic variation. The Hardy-Weinberg theorem describes a gene pool of a non-evolving population. This theorem states that the frequencies of alleles and genotypes in a population's gene pool will remain constant over generations unless acted upon by agents other than Mendelian segregation and recombination of alleles. p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1 is the general formula for the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Using this formula, we can calculate frequencies of alleles in a gene pool if we know the frequencies of genotypes, or the frequencies of genotypes if we know the frequencies of alleles. Five conditions must be met for a population to remain in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Extremely large population size, no gene flow, no mutations, random mating, and no natural selection. Gene flow is the transfer of alleles into or out of populations. Another phenomenon that affects allele frequencies is genetic drift. Genetic drift is when chance events cause allele frequencies to shift. There are two different examples of genetic drift, the founder effect and the bottleneck effect. The founder effect is when a few individuals becomes isolated from a larger population and the smaller group that establishes a population has a gene pool that differs from the source population. For example, if you and a couple of your friends went out and made a new population on a deserted island, and one of your friends had a genetic disease that made her blind, the population of the island would have an unusually large proportion of blind people in relation to the source population. The bottleneck effect is when a sudden change in the environment, like a flash fire, flood, or nuclear missile, drastically reduces the population size. Some alleles may thusly become overrepresented, just like in the founder effect, and thus change the allele frequencies in the population. Let's take a closer look at natural selection. The terms struggle for existence and survival of the fittest are misleading because they suggest that individuals compete directly in contests. In some animal species, males do compete directly for mates. Reproductive success is generally subtler and depends on factors other than battle for mates. For example, a barnacle may produce more eggs than its neighbors because it is more efficient at filtering food from the water. Wildflowers may be successful because they attract more pollinators. These examples of adaptive advantage are all components of evolutionary fitness. Fitness is defined as the contribution an individual makes to the gene pool of the next generation relative to the contributions of other individuals. Population geneticists define relative fitness as the contribution of a genotype to the next generation compared to the contribution of alternative genotypes for the same locus. There are three modes of selection, directional, disruptive, and stabilizing selection. Directional selection is when conditions favor one extreme of the phenotypic range and drives evolution towards it. Disruptive selection is when the extremes are favored and the intermediate phenotypes are not. And stabilizing selection acts against the extremes and favors the intermediate variants. Sexual selection is the selection for traits that enhance an individual's chances of obtaining mates. Sexual selection can lead to sexual dimorphism, the distinction between males and females on the basis of secondary sexual characteristics. Sexual selection may involve intrasexual selection, in which individuals of the same sex compete for mates, or intersexual selection, in which individuals of one sex, usually the female, discriminate in choosing a mate, also called mate choice. Intersexual selection may be based on showy traits that reflect the general health of the male, and thus the quality of his genes. Now you have been armed with some information on the concepts of evolution. Have fun, because evolution is awesome.